Call this meeting to order. The time is 7.30 p.m. This is a regular meeting of the City Council of Madison Heights for March 25th, 2019. Will the clerk please take roll? Mayor Pro Tem Bliss. Councilman Corbett. Here. Councilman Gettings. Here. Councilor Gravstein. Here. Councilwoman Scott. Councilman Soltis. Here. Mayor Hartwell. I'm here. Uh, will a member of council uh, please excuse uh, Mayor Pro Tem Bliss and Councilwoman Scott from tonight's meeting? They both request. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Absent. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Gettings. Is there support? Mr. Mayor. Ms. Grafstein. Support. Thank you. Any discussion on excusing for tonight's meeting? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Bliss and Councilwoman Scott. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. <laughs> the motion carries. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, would you please rise if you're able for an invocation to be led by Councillor Grafstein and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. In a stand against hatred, I would like everyone to take a moment of silence to honor the victims of the White Church New Zealand massacre. May their memory be a blessing. Thank you. You may be seated. I understand there's uh, one addition to the agenda tonight. Uh, maybe more, but what's the wish of council for additions and deletions? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Corbett. Sir, I move that, we, uh, that the council add to the agenda as an item D6, tentative agreement between the department heads, union, and the city of Madison Heights. Thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Ms. Grafstein. Support. Thank you. Motion was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilor Grafstein to add an item to tonight's agenda under report D6, the uh, tentative agreement between the city and the department heads union. Is there any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. <clears throat> the motion carries. Are there other additions or deletions to the agenda tonight? Thank you. Hearing none, uh, we can go to presentations. We have one tonight. It's the proclamation to declare Child Abuse and Prevention Month. Uh, Mrs. Marsh, do you have a report? Yes, April is Child Abuse Prevention Month. This month, the community is encouraged to help raise awareness with the Madison Heights Women's Club, who are once again hosting pinwheels for, for prevention throughout the city with special activities scheduled for April 11th. Council is requested to approve this proclamation and declare April 2019 as Child Abuse Prevention Month in Madison Heights. And it's my understanding that Laurie Geralds and Amy um, Schroeder and maybe Beth Hall are here to accept the proclamation. Would you please come up? Could I just add one thing, please? Um, I'm Lori Geralds. I'd just like to say this actually is a joint partnership with the uh, Madison Heights Youth Assistance as well. So Deb Lindsay is joining us tonight. Great, thank you. Congratulations, Lori. Congratulations. Thank you. There are no public hearings this evening, so we can go to meeting open to the public. Um, our tradition in Madison Heights is to uh, ask that residents limit their comments to three minutes or less. It's not required, although uh, it's preferred if you can give your name, your address, and any affiliation you may have. 
And please be so kind to direct your comments only through me as the chair of this meeting and don't make any personal attacks. Um, uh, meeting is open to the public. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Eliza Lee, and I'm here. I live at uh, 31800 um, Harlow Drive here in Madison Heights. I've been a resident here for a little over 15 years. I'm with the uh, Madison Heights Crime Commission, and this Thursday we're having a child abuse and neglect forum over here at the uh, fire department. And that's uh, Thursday, March 28th from 6 the 8 p.m. The door is going to open at 8, 5:30 uh, with refreshments, um, and this is a free event. Uh, the Crime Commission. We're planning on having a bi-monthly event for people to come out and get awareness and education about different issues that we have in our community. Child ab uh, abuse and neglect happens around the country, 24 hours a day, and this is. Um, something that we are put together for bring awareness. And for people to recognize child abuse and neglect when they see it, they do not have to get personally involved. Everybody pretty much have a phone, a camera on their phone. You can take a video picture, camera, license plate, description, anything, and uh, report that to the authorities to help protect our children and youth in our city here. Um, so we have a, a forum, a panel here that answer the questions that uh, citizens here they may have concerns to give clarification exactly what child abuse is about and what neglect is. And there's many titles that people may not understand that child abuse fall under. Uh, some could be um, signs are physical abuse, mental abuse, um, any kind of abuse to a child. <laughs> people need to come out and get the facts about it so they can recognize them when they see it. So I'm advising everybody to attend the event this Thursday at the fire department. Um, and like I said, it, it starts at 6 to 8, but the doors open at 5.30. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. How are you guys doing? My name is David Pardon. Um, I'm actually from Sterling Heights, but our family does a lot of business in this area, and they have done it for a long time. Um, recently, you guys have agreed on the ordinance for the medical marijuana facilities licensing. We are a phase one, step one approved provisioning center. Um, just wanted to introduce ourselves, to myself to you on behalf of us as Michigan's finest. Um, I know you guys are looking more towards the co-location of one big building and one big business. Just want to make sure you don't forget the local guys that are applying for maybe just for one license or if it's a possibility to, to do that. So we'll be around, and if you want to talk after, I'd love to. So once again, it's David Pardon. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Welcome Good evening. back. Here I am again, fighting for Boomer, who, by the way, is still waiting for his freedom. He can't speak. All he can do is wait and wait and wait. And all of us here are waiting and waiting and waiting with him. And we will be here waiting and waiting and waiting and working to free this dog who is completely innocent. This dog is set. Oh, I lost my place. I'm old. Forgive me. It's not, a big, it's not a big decision to free Boomer. It's a very simple one. All you have to do is just let him go. Let him be with his, his daddy and his grandma and give him the chance to have a life. He's not having a life in wherever you have him. And I'm almost done. Boomer is falsely accused of killing a little dog. We're all sorry for that. There is no evidence that Boomer did this. I thought in this country, in the United States, you're innocent until you're proven guilty. I'm 80 years old and I've been taught that you're innocent until you're proven guilty.
whether you're a dog, you're a human being, you're a deer in the woods or a rat on the ground. Everything has a right to live. And this isn't a joking matter to us. We are dog owners, dog lovers, and maybe some of you have a dog too, and you wouldn't like it seized if it was innocent either. So I just would like you to please talk to Judge Hunt and your police chief. I'm gonna just say a word and get this dog set free. He's a beautiful dog, he's a sweet dog. He didn't do this. This isn't the work of a, of a dog. This is the work of a coyote. I've researched it and researched it. And no dog rips another dog's stomach open and eats it like this little dog was to, done to him. So please, stand up for this little dog. He needs your help, the same as anybody does. And I'm going to be here until you help set him free. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, how are you guys doing? Great. My name is Rose Atkins. I live in Utica, Michigan, and I'm here to support Boomer. We have over 135,000 signatures on a change.org <laughs> demanding that if Boomer is not released, we are going to come after everybody that we can to, to support this dog. You guys are making a huge mistake here. Everything that is looked up on this dog says that Boomer didn't do it. We feel bad about Chubbs because we are animal lovers ourselves. But you can't accuse and sentence a dog to death just because he might have done something. The evidence is not there, and I demand that you guys look into this and release him. We have also 4,000 people on our Facebook that are watching this from coast to coast. We have people from out of the country watching this case. So all of you are being watched by everybody in the world, and we will not stop and we will not forget Boomer, and we will not stop until something is done. Please, I am begging you, if you guys release Boomer to me, I will take him out of the state. You'll never see him again. Just please release him. Please, I'm begging you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Carolyn Roberts. I'm from Warren, Michigan. Um, Michigan, obviously. Formerly Madison Heights. I'm a nervous speaker, so I have a couple notes here. Because the first time I spoke, I didn't finish what I wanted to say. I wanted to reiter reiterate that we are not blindly following this dog. We have done the research. We have looked at all the evidence. There is no evidence to say that Boomer did this. That is why we are supporting him. That is why we are trying to be his voice. And if an innocent dog in Madison Heights can be convicted and sentenced to death with absolutely no evidence, then any dog in Madison Heights, it could happen to. My daughter has dogs in Madison Heights. If it could happen to Boomer with no evidence, it could happen to any resident's dog. That's how I feel. And just one last note, um, Madison Heights, still can do the right thing before the appeals court does it. Madison Heights, if, if they go ahead and they kill this dog, if they kill Boomer, they're forever gonna be known as the city, Madison Heights, that killed innocent Boomer. And instead of known as the city that did the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mary Ellen Clancy, and I live at 34063 Gable Drive in Livonia. I have been Welcome. following Boomer for about 10 months now, and I don't want to spend any more time talking. I'd like to approach your bench and spend my three minutes having you look at a video of Boomer. 
Is that appropriate? Unfortunately, no. Um, the only way to submit video is before the meeting so we can review it. Um, we only allow agents or contractors to submit video during the meeting. Um, but if you would like to play a video during meeting open to the public, you need to submit that, submit that video to the city manager's office the Tuesday before the meeting. Okay. Well, so the, the next us. meeting, I'll look on the calendar. I invite you to the next meeting, and that's April 8th. That's the next regular city council meeting. So you would need to submit that video by Tuesday, April the 2nd. That's the only way to, to, to have a video played during meeting open to the public. Okay, well. It, uh, and only if it's deemed appropriate, of course. Um, and that's, this, that's been the policy of the city for years and years and years and years and years. It was my understanding that um, we were told that you would look at the video. It's just a homemade video. Uh, after the meeting is closed, of course, I'll, I, you can approach me personally and I'll, I'll review any. Uh, Ma'am, it's not your turn, just I a minute. Know, I thought the mayor daily said it. Uh, Ma'am, please, please, please. So, Mary Ellen, Miss Clancy, I'm interested in your video. However, the rules prevent you from playing it during meeting open to the public. You're invited to come back to the next meeting, as I said, if you wanted to submit it so you can play it in a live meeting if it's appropriate or I'll wait till after the meeting and you can just show it to me just privately, just as two private citizens. I did also send it to all the city council, so they do all have it. They haven't had a chance to look at it yet though. I will do that because uh, my father's funeral is that day and I won't be in town, so. Um, we do meet the second and fourth Monday of pretty much every month of the year. Okay, but um, I mean, I, I just think it's important for everybody to see this before a decision is made. Okay. I did interrupt you, so I, I'll give you a fresh three minutes if there's something on your mind you'd like to speak. I, I, I owned a pit bull, and my pit bull was trained to be a rescue dog. I can only say that I have many police officers, my son is one, as well as many other family members and judges in our family, and I, I, I think I'm coming to you in asking in good faith that if all the circumstances were resubmitted, I, I don't think we'd be having this conversation. As far as I know is the uh, young adult child that made the call, rescinded her actual statement at first. She thought and assumed because Boomer was in the yard with her other three dogs, two hiding underneath the deck, that, that it, it appeared. And, and I see how that could appear. But she's rescinded that statement. You know, I, I, nobody's forced her to. And she was a young child. And, and reviewing the facts, she didn't see an incident happen. And if Boomer had blood on him, I guarantee you, any officer would have taken that dog that day, that day. And the way that that dog was taken from the family, in my opinion, obviously it shouldn't have happened. But we'd like to be his voice. Okay, and I, and I respect you. I, I respect your entire office, your staff, your officers. But when a mistake is made, I just hope that as adults we could all agree to rescind that also. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> Meeting is still open to the public on any subject. <laughs> Welcome, okay. Ken. My name is Ken Sweet. Um, you know, I don't know why you guys don't get involved one way because you cannot be charged with um, obstruction of justice. I know if you know how the obstruction of justice crime works. Do you know, Mayor, or you want to talk about it? It's your turn to speak, Ken. Okay. Well, it works this way. You have to have an underlying crime committed before you can charge someone with obstruction of justice. And due to the fact that I'm up here, I would like to ask the chair for additional three minutes. 
uh, because this is not a, a Randy Dan uh, situation. It, it's the death of a dog. And I'm sure, and this is not a court of law, but I'm sure in a court of law, attorney would not get three minutes for his closing statement. Okay? So I don't know if I can grant that or not from the chair. Uh, there are time limits in a court of law. Uh, not, no, no, not no three minutes, believe me. The, a closing an argument can take up to 10, 15 minutes without no problem. We're not in a court of law, sir. I understand, I said that. Don't you understand? I understand you're, you're not in the court of law. I'm just giving you how important this is. This is the death of a dog. Now, if you don't really care about animals, that's fine. Yes, it is necessary. Because the man is disallowing me to give six minutes, maybe six minutes. I don't know. But how are you going to do? Cut me off before I get finished? I mean, what's the three more minutes going to cost you? Number one, nothing. So do I get six minutes or not? Yeah. Continue, Ken, speak. That means? You just spent two minutes discussing how much time you get. I'm spending two minutes because you're not making a decision. That's why I'm spending two minutes, because your lack of a decision making. And number, th number three, which is not, uh, your trash can was taken in by me. I drove by and I backed up four houses to take your trash can in, you don't owe me nothing. Because I said, well, that's the mayor of Madison Heights. He's got more important things to bring a trash can in. So you've probably seen the trash can on the porch and wonder who did it. I don't live there, Ken. Pardon me? I don't live there. Oh, you don't? Yeah, you do. I, you know, that's, okay, well, you didn't give me. I tried to give you a favor. Try. Okay, so let me let me go ahead and try to talk about this if as much as I can. Uh, I gotta get my glasses, unfortunately. I'm getting operation, eye operation. Uh, Ken, how about this? You just spent three minutes. I'll give you three minutes if you actually have a real point to make. I have that? many a point. All right, make them. The problem is you guys don't let us speak up. A human can kill a dog, but only get maximum four years for killing a dog. A dog allegedly kills another dog, allegedly, and he gets death. Now that's not a comparison at all, number one. And number two, uh, don't we have more things important in crime than Boomer? I have sympathy for both dogs. My love for animals is why I'm here tonight. I love animals more than some of the humans. With my law enforcement experience, I dove into the investigation for, in my uh, opinion, it looks like a kindergartner did this investigation. We need to open the investigation back up. We should and we must vet, vet the, the investigation. It needs to be vetted. And why did they get rid of the do other dogs so quick if they're talking about a homicide before they completed all the, the what they needed? And that's what they did. They were in a hurry to get rid of it. And then I wonder what judges, prosecutors, police would do if it's their dog. The good question. It's a little different when, you, when it nails on your foot. Foot on nail shoes on your foot. It doesn't make a difference what I said. Power of, of, without control is very dangerous. Uh, what have we thought about probation for um, Boomer? We can put a, a lease on him, a muzzle on him while he's outdoors and give him a year of probation before death, I think that's better than death. Now, that's why Michigan don't have a death sentence. You know how many complaint, I mean, mixed up convictions we've had in the last year? That's why we don't have the death sentence. We don't automatically just kill somebody because the lack of attorneys, judges, and police making mistakes. It might be the easy way out to get rid of Boomer, but it's not, not in the long run. Animals should have the same rights as humans, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not being going to keep uh, Boomer, I'm not gonna beg to keep Boomer alive, but all I'm asking for is the facts and the real facts. That's all I'm asking for. 
Now, dogs and, and animals has worse when they're locked up because at least a person, you can tell them why he's locked up. An animal, you can't tell him anything about why he's locked up. He just knows he's locked up. He's not home with his, with his owners, which is not very good. And, and the ta cost for taxpayers and the reputation to the city of Madison Heights is, is very poor, believe me. And they, the, our United States says a, a victim has to have beyond a reasonable doubt to be uh, convicted. And we haven't went to beyond reasonable doubt. We just said, well, we'll get rid of them. Now, pit bulls are a child that's not born dangerous. They're both of them. They're taught dangerous. Now, what I did is I, I talked to the woman who owns the animal place on John R., and she agreed, we're gonna start a, a boomer dies. We're gonna start a go fund me, and we're gonna build a model on her property. She already agreed to it. We're gonna have writing on the bottom, and we're gonna, what we're gonna do is say allegedly Boomer was killed by the city of Madison Heights. And then we also got the election coming up in next, uh, I think it's November, uh, next year, right? coming up this year, matter of fact. And we got the election coming up, so we got to, all of us gotta think about that. We might not live in the city, but we can sure put our force, money, or time into getting people out of the office. And that's it. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Ken. I Would anyone else like to address city council? Hi, Your Honor. Tracy Welcome. Stiff, 29148 Tesmer Court. Welcome back. I know I'm supposed to address only you, but I did want to bring up the fact that some city council members are looking elsewhere at their laptops, rolling their eyes, not paying attention to what we're saying. And I don't appreciate it. Thank you. I want to address the fact that you keep saying that you can't settle this case. We all know better. We all know it. Everybody knows it. I told you last time I called four different attorneys, two in Madison Heights. They all told me the same thing. I don't appreciate my city council lying to its residents. It's insulting at best. I want the residents to know that you're spending tens of thousands of dollars of taxpayers' money on outside attorneys from West Bloomfield and Bingham Farms to handle this case. It can't even be in our own city. We're not even bringing revenue back into our own city for this. And this is to kill a dog. Tens thousands of dollars to kill a dog who had no blood on him. Anybody that has ever owned a dog, a cat, a fur coat, whatever, blood doesn't come out of fur. It's almost impossible to get out. A dog could not wipe it out by themselves. <laughs> this wasted money could be going to our children, our seniors, our parks, where it should be directed instead of being spent to kill a dog. It's shameful, it is. And there are over 100,000 signatures on Boomer's petition. How do you justify 100,000 people being wrong and one man, being Judge Hunt, being right? How do you do that? I mean, I was in front of Judge Hunt once for a, a three-car pileup. Well, sorry, two Mack trucks in my car. I was ticketed for being in the accident in the middle. I went and fought it. I brought an attorney with me. Judge Hunt, Judge Hunt said, you're guilty because the officer gave you the ticket. And it was just by fluke. The man who hit me in the rear was also in the courtroom and stood up and said, she didn't cause the accident, I did. I pushed her in. So I know Judge Hunt can make mistakes. He's human, we all do. But is his pride worth all of this? I don't think so. I'm not really going there with that. Um, these people have seen the transcripts and they know this is a miscarriage of justice. It is your duty as our mayor and city council to address this and make sure justice is served. 
our own city has the Facebook page, which you may well know. Well, I made one boomer comment and I was kicked off. It wasn't a save boomer thing, it wasn't a big speech. I was told by the woman who controls the page that it was the city manager's request that anything related to Boomer be taken off. That's not a democracy. It's not, that's a dictatorship. Is that what we have in Madison Heights now? Sure seems like it. Our Freedom of Information Act requests keep getting delayed. That is also wrong. We have the right to know exactly how much of taxpayer dollars are being spent on this case. Supporters come from all over the globe, India, the UK, France, Italy, Australia, the Netherlands, just to name a few, have come together to save Boomer. I want to explain dog on dog kills to you. I am a dog trainer, have been for two decades. When a dog kills another dog, they go for the throat and they shake violently. This did not happen to Chubbs. His stomach was ripped open, and that is the way a coyote kills, not a dog. His neck would have been broken had he been killed by another dog. Thank you, ma'am. Do you have a final point to make? Um, actually, I wanted to give you, Mr. Mayor, these to pass out. I'll accept those. Which Thank you. Would anyone else like to address City Council? That's Ken's. Oh. Welcome. Hello. Um, I didn't really plan on talking today, but you've all compelled me. Um, I am a <laughs> I'm a resident of Madison Heights. <laughs> I'm a resident of Madison Heights. I moved here shortly before this boomer situation happened. Um, I have my own dog as well. I go to Wayne State for social work. I will be graduating this May, and I've learned a lot about the do's and the don'ts and the rights and the wrongs and the just and the unjust. And I think that a lot of it transcribes to animals as well. And this situation has just got me feeling passionate about things. Um, this is in my eyes completely wrong. I, I just, if this was my dog, I honestly, <laughs> I could not imagine what his owner is going through. I don't know if any of you have animals, but if you were in his situation, I don't know what you would be doing either. So I just wanted to let you guys know that the, um, the support for Boomer is growing. We are here, we are loud, and we are ready to keep fighting. So thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening, Linda Abramov from Romeo, Michigan. Um, thank you for having us. And as you look around the room, all of us, we're here on our own time. We're mothers, we, have, we work, we have children that we could be home with. I don't know Boomer, okay? I'm sure the majority of us don't know Boomer, but we know the difference between right and wrong. And that is why we will continue on our own dime, on our own time, to fight for what is right. And uh, Ms. Grafstein, when you stood up and took a moment of silence, that told me you're a woman of God. When we stood our Pledge of Allegiance, we said one nation under God. I have my whole church and several churches praying because when I presented the evidence to them, they immediately took it under prayer. Our group is continuing to grow. We are not uneducated people. We are not crazy animal activists. We might get up here and speak out passion and we might sound like we're a little out there, but it's because we know this is an innocent dog. I've been an animal handler for 40 some years. Tracy is a trainer. I'm sure there's rescue people here. We know the difference between an animal that is an aggressive killer and I guarantee any of us, if we believe this was a dangerous dog to animals or people, we would agree that the right thing to do would be to euthanize an animal that's not safe. This is not the case. 
We also know that when the animal control officer came to the site, there was no blood on Boomer. There was no aggression in Boomer. <clears throat> he was um, seized illegally. And I'm sure everyone is very educated and smart here. Um, government officials, government officials, including animal control officers or police officers, must respect dog owners' constitutional rights when they seize or kill their pets. There was never a warrant of seizure for Boomer. He was taken illegally. He also, the ACO did an assessment on Boomer. He passed with flying colors. A certified behaviorist did an assessment on Boomer. He passed with flying colors. Boomer has been kenneled since last April. Any dog, any dog kenneled this amount of time even if they're non-aggressive, they are going to start to go stir crazy and be uncomfortable. I am sure the kennel that has him in Roseville has to have some kind of um, communication with Madison Heights that if this dog shows any aggression of any kind, they must contact you. Boomer hasn't shown this. And that dog has every right to show this at this point. I, he's been kenneled for almost one year away from family. He has not shown any aggression to any animal that has gone past his cage. Big, small, person, anything. Every single video, over and over, shows an animal who's happy, who's excited to see people. So, I also know judges, mayors, police officers, I believe, take oaths of justice. I'm sure I don't have to read it to you, but I will if anybody wants. The last line is, under the Constitution and laws of the United States, so help me God. I believe in my heart, no matter what, God sees everything, we answer to God, that's my belief. If Madison Heights can kill an innocent dog, and we have asked for proof, we've never been given everything we have asked for, everything. We want to see what is the proof that he's convicted on. Do you have a final point, ma'am? I have a final point that I'm asking all of you, Mayor Hartwell, I believe you can do much more, and I believe you can talk to Judge Hunt, and then one day we all answer to God. So I hope we answer right. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm a resident of Sterling Heights. Um, like my friend, I did not come prepared to speak, um, but I did feel it necessary. Um, first, I would like to thank you for your time here today. Um, I know that you don't make the final decision. I know you're not the judge, and I know you're not the jury. But I just want to ask, would you sentence a human to death without proof or evidence? I understand we're talking about a dog, but I don't know about you, but in my family, my dog is family. I would simply like to ask that you please work to sway the final decision, because here as it stands right now, it is wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. I typed a few things up as to not ramble. Um, my name is Kelly, and I live in a neighboring city. I've been attending your city council meetings for a couple of months now. I also dine in your city, shop in your city, and just this past weekend attended an event supporting your animal shelter. I saw you there too, Mr. Mayor. I stand before you today, certainly not because I like to speak publicly. I'm extremely nervous right now, but rather because I'm completely confused as to why the city has chosen to end the life of a resident's beloved pet and without just cause. First, I want to share my sympathy for Chubbs. Pets are family, and the pain of losing one is horrific. Why, though, the city would choose to inflict more pain and suffering on a resident and now an entire community is baffling to me? 
uh, the issue is twofold. One, there's no proof, and two, even if there was, why would the city go to such extremes as to end a life when there are other options? To my knowledge, this pet has no prior incidents, and everything I've seen presented in the case speaks to this dog's innocence, not guilt. My intent isn't to rehash everything that's already been said tonight. You've heard it. I've been sitting here listening every week. I do want you to know, though, that this city's actions thus far has made me feel sad, angry, and just outright confused as to what's going on here. It doesn't make any sense. I, I'm struggling because I no longer feel good about dining here. I no longer feel good about shopping here or supporting your city's events or encouraging others to do the same. As I've sat here listening to you all speak to your city's vision the past couple of months, I'm convinced you're all good people. I'm just not understanding why we're not doing anything to stop this. Um, you have the power to do something, and I'm just asking that you, you try. Thanks for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Would anyone else like to speak? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, my name is Kim Pomerville. I've been up here each time that I've come, and I'm um, I just want to reiterate a couple things that have been said. Um, first of all, I, I think it's important that the council kn knows it's important that you listen to the outcries of your residents. There's a ton of outcries. And it sounds to me like everything has fallen to deaf ears. Um, I know that I've written letters and I've, I've, I've portrayed a verbatim case that took place in St. Clair County um, with another dog named Jeb. It was absolutely verbatim identical to the case with Boomer. Um, the, a very small dog, a Pomeranian, was killed. One by one, I'll quickly repeat the chain of events which were identical. The owner heard his dog scream out. The owner ran to his window and saw the next door neighbor's dog in the yard, which was a very large dog named Jeb, who had gotten away from his owner and got out of the yard. When Jeb's owner made way to his home, the owner of the Pomeranian said to him, your dog killed my dog. Hence a trial, the dog was seized, taken away by animal control. Um, the dog, <coughs> then a, a trial in, was underway. The same ruling took place. Nobody saw anything, you understand. Nobody saw. The owner of the Pomeranian heard the scream, just like Miss Denmark heard a scream from Chubbs. And the same ruling happened. Dangerous dog law. Um, this dog, Jeb, was going to be sentenced to be destroyed. Well, the only difference between these two cases was the fact that the Pomeranian was not cremated. And I, I want to reiterate the concern that the gentleman had said here. We have that question over and over. Why was Chubbs cremated? You could have averted all of this. You could have averted this nightmare. I feel that some underhanded activity, either some underhanded activity or just plain old ineptness has taken place. Why would, who, who makes the call to allow that dog to, is it the prosecutor? Is it the police? Why did they do that? That could have solved everything. But no, they didn't do it. They destroyed that dog's body immediately. And hence, we are here where we are now. Well, you should also know that when they did the DNA on the Pomeranian named Vlad, guess what? Jeb didn't do it. Another animal did it. And we're talking split second timing. We are talking split second timing where a yell took place and the next door neighbor's dog jumped into the yard, but the real killer fled. That's how quickly it happened. And I wrote that letter to both of you in my letter, but I wanted to say it here because it seems like it's fallen to deaf ears. Please rethink what you're doing. Please talk to the people. I don't know what happened. Please talk to the chief of police. Please talk to the judge. Pay attention. There is so much more to this. There is absolutely, Boomer would have been covered with blood because when I spoke to the prosecutor's office, they tried to tell me there was no blood. They lied to me. 
They told me there was no, hardly any blood, and I come to find out that poor dog's body was ravaged. His entire intestines were torn out. He had covered with blood, but the, the, the prosecutor's office told me there was hardly any blood, and Boomer could have licked it away just like a dog would lick their chops after they ate a meal. Thank you, Ms. Pomville. Thank you. You know, Mayor, I, I live in the city. My name is Donna Dawling. I live on Green Street, and I resent the fact that they're calling my council, my mayor, these names. I resent that. I know all of you personally. And I... Hey, 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 stop. Uh, it's my turn. I no, didn't say anything stop. to you. Say, Do Donna, Donna, just talk to me. And uh, this gentleman behind me, he said, you don't like Boomer? I don't know Boomer, and I feel bad. I, I love animals. I have animals, I have dogs, and I feel really bad. But I think these people are barking up the wrong tree. Thank you. Hey, stop. No one, until this moment, everyone's been very respectful. Let's continue that mood. The meeting is still open to the public. Would anyone else like to speak? Oh, wait, ma'am, there's one more uh, gentleman. Good evening, sir. Welcome. My name is Joseph Bellow. I recently moved to Shelby Township from Port Huron. I'm an animal activist. I'm an animal activist. I, I love animals. I have all my life. I'm 55 years old. From the time I was knee high to a cricket, I've had animals. Horses, cows, dogs, cats, bats, rats, I'm they, you name it, I've had it. Coyotes are aggressive. They can climb fences. They can climb trees. Now, I see all these postings about coyote warnings. Okay, what's being done about it? I have not yet, I have yet to see an animal control unit anywhere. You take a dog, you say he's aggressive. Stereotyping, because he's a pit bull? Okay, profiling, that's wrong. Stereotyping's wrong. You condemn a man to death for killing somebody. Okay. He has a trial. He has evidence, either for him or against him. Boomer has no evidence against him. Everything's pointing the opposite way. And legislation is backwards, and nobody's doing anything to change that legislation. They're turning a blind eye to it. What, what's going to get done when one of your animals is illegally seized, illegally convicted of doing something it didn't do? How are you going to feel then? How will you react then? Me? The law says don't take the law into your own hands. The law is doing nothing. Turn on the news. The police need our help. Got to find this guy. Got to find that guy. Our taxpayers pay them to do a job. Why do we have to do it for them? My thing is, Boomer does not belong where he is. There's no, nothing that says he's guilty of this crime. I just plead that, I, 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 I beg you, look at all the evidence. Look at all the facts. Look at all the statements. The reiteration of statements. It's not right. The council needs to do something about all the wrongs. You say Madison Heights is a city of progress. Madison Heights is going backwards. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Welcome. 
Good evening, sir. I came unprepared. I didn't mean to uh, talk, but uh, I would love to, just to let you know that we're all in support of the Boomer. Uh, my name is Celestine Lim. I've been dog rescuing since 2010. I have emigrated from Philippines where the dogs have no right or less right, but Boomer is in Madison Heights, Michigan, USA. So he's treated, he's being treated like no rights too. And it's a power play. So, and there's no evidence that he killed the chihuahua of the next door neighbor. So uh, please release him and uh, stop wasting your money. Madison's high uh, taxes and uh, start using it for the more appropriate uh, uh, Yes, enough is enough. You know, uh, I, I just, I came straight from rescuing a bird, just a bird, and uh, I got it like uh, with the eyes infected, and I drove, have, have a friend drove me 40 miles just to save that bird, and Boomers is a dog. It, I hope um, eventually dog will be treated as sentient beings. Right now it's not, but uh, we're in USA, but he's being treated like in, in, in a foreign country in Asia where it's about power play and being discriminated as in, in, in Asia, as long as you have the power, you know, you can get your way. So please uh, reconsider it and let re release Boomer because he's innocent. And uh, so, um, so like I said, um, stop, stop the power play and discrimination. It's not about the uh, breed, uh, 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 pit bull are being discriminated. It's not about the breed. It's about the deed being done on the dog and Boomer uh, has, it's been innocent and it's been, uh, it's been proven to be a loving dog. Please allocate your resources and uh, enough is enough. And uh, there is so much support everywhere. So please uh, stop wasting Madison's high taxes and use it appropriately. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Hi. My name is Kimberly Wiley. I live in Roseville. I do a lot of business here in Madison Heights. I spend thousands and thousands of dollars every year shopping, eating, going to the movies, um, supporting your animal shelters here. Um, if I'm gonna continue to spend my money in your city, um, I would like to see it allocated towards the veterans and the elderly and the school systems and the potholes that we're driving over tearing our cars up. Not trying to kill an innocent dog he had no blood. There's no, in, there's no evidence at all that he's even done this. So if I'm gonna continue to spend my money here, which I won't until Boomer is free because he is innocent, um, I would like to also, I'd like to also invite each and every one of you, take an hour of your time together, separate, go down and meet Boomer. Spend an hour with him playing with toys because I can guarantee you, you'll probably spend, look, I guarantee you, you'll spend way more time than that hour you allocated to spend time with him. You will fall in love with him. Worst thing he can do is bring you with the wrong toy. Thank you. All right, last call. Would anyone else like to speak? Okay, I'm going to take about 20 seconds. Along. I generally Ken, allow that. Thank you. Yeah. Ken Fweet, uh, you know, I seen two coyotes about a month ago in Rosie's Park. Now, it's illegal, in case you don't know that, to kill a coyote in the state of Michigan unless the coyote is aggressive and you feel or you feel someone else is in danger. Same as the person. And I also see on TV about a week ago where a large bird killed a little dog on the street. So it, it's not saying that coyotes can't kill, it's not saying that big birds can't kill, because they have. And it's something that you need to think about. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thweet. Hi, my name's Rose Atkins again. I'm, I'm gonna let you guys know that um, I talked to the newspaper of Madison Heights and I informed them that we have a coyote problem and it's gonna get bigger and bigger. And in the next year, it's gonna be so big that maybe somebody would do something about it. I'm not blaming the coyotes, I'm blaming the humans because we built up so much 
those coyotes they have nothing to eat on, and so they're choosing to eat animals. So now everybody is out there, and they're saying they got to be out there with their animals in the backyard. They got to be out there. They can't let the cats out because there's a coyote problem. And within a year, you're going to really know there's a problem, and you're going to remember me. Thank you. Very much. just like to say that no one here that is fighting for the life of Boomer has been name-calling anyone on this council. Thank you. We have been very disrespect, I mean very respectful and not disrespectful. We have sat quietly for times and listened to other people's things. We expect the same of you even though I don't live in this city. But no one is name calling, no one is being disrespectful. And if there's anyone on that council that doesn't care to hear about Boomer, because we're going to be here every single time you have a meeting. So if you can't handle that, maybe you should give up your job. <laughs> because you have a member up there that sits there and goes, <sighs> pays exactly no attention reads papers, reads the computer, pays no attention what people are being said up here. And this matters to us. We care about this dog. We care about your dog. We care about you. I care about you. old men, young men, women of all kinds. I'm an 80-year-old woman, and I can, <laughs> I can carry on a conversation with anybody, and I do. But if you don't like me talking, then you get rid of your decision to kill this dog so I can stay home and watch my American Idol. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Good evening. Hi. Good evening. I spoke once before, Mayor. My name is Robin Chian. I'm a Wyandotte resident. I'm from Downriver. Welcome back. Thank you. I just would like to say, I'm not a taxpayer here. My dog doesn't live in your t city. But how many animals do live in your city, and have you taken precautions so this doesn't happen again to any other animals? Has anything been done so the dog is not immediately cremated if a dog jumps a fence into a yard? Has anything been changed? Any policies, procedures, anything with the police officers? Do they know not to let the dog go without it getting DNA testing? Has anything been done to protect all the dogs in the city of Madison Heights? Everyone's dog in the city of Madison Heights is at risk. Absolutely at risk. It doesn't have to be a pit bull. Your citizens in your city have animals. Do something to protect them. Don't tell me you can't. You all can. Every single one of you can. So for the city residents that are listening now, know that your dog is not protected. Your cat is not protected. Coyotes don't just go after dogs. They go after cats. So what has this city done to protect the animals that live within the city limits? How are you protecting them for their owners that pay the taxes of the city? Anything? protecting the city. It's not related to Boomer's case. It's related to the city's animals. I saw I was told they could not respond to Boomer questions. It's all subject it's all subjects. It, it's all subjects. So the animals I pray for your animals in the city. I pray for you. Thank you, Robin. Uh, 
the meeting is still open to the public. I just want to say that I'm a pit bull advocate and I would never bring my pit bulls into the city because I would always be worried that if something happened, they would be blamed. I also want to say that you don't have to be an animal lover to do what's right. We, not everybody thinks the same way about animals. And I don't understand it, but I know it exists. And, but the judge even admitted that there's only a 50% chance that he says Boomer did it. And how is that okay? That you don't even have to have proof. And everybody has been saying that. And so it's not okay for an animal. So, so it's okay, you guys look at it as it's okay just to put it down because it's just an animal, but we don't see it that way. We see it as a life that's innocent, that deserves to go home. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak that hasn't had an opportunity to speak? If you'd like to speak again. Um, Hi, Mayor Hartwell. Um, since you're an attorney, I have a question for you. How is a case judged on preponderance of the evidence? Can you answer that? I'm not talking about any case in particular. I'm just talking it's in not my, It's not my turn to speak. Okay, well, it's my understanding that this is how this case of Boomer was decided. Four attorneys could not explain to me what exactly that means. And I find that troubling. Basically what I got out of it is it's more of an Occam's razor type thing. The simplest explanation must be true. History shows us that theory is really flawed. It's wrong. Now, if I'm wrong in, in my understanding of what preponderance of the evidence means, then I do apologize. I also wanted to address the fact of the name calling. We're not calling you names. Th this is my city. This is, I've raised my kids here, my family here, my dogs here, my cats here. Every single one of you are my neighbor. Mr. Corbett, we live in the same condo complex together. I mean, we're neighbors. I care about what happens to you, and I want you to care about what happens to your neighbor, Justin's dog. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak that hasn't had an opportunity to do so? All right, no one else has asked to be recognized, so we'll close this portion of the meeting. The next part of the meeting is communications. We don't have any tonight, so we can go to reports. We have five reports in the agenda and we added a sixth one. So let's begin with report D1, that's from the fire chief. It's the Oakway Mutual Aid Association Interlocal Agreement Amendment. Mrs. Marsh, do you have a report? Yes. In August of 2012, City Council approved our participation in the Oakway organization. Our participation has been invaluable for its member communities. This agreement has been revised to keep it current with best practices. Modifications were made to redefine share, shared powers, party contribution, and financial reports and record keeping. Staff and I recommend that City Council adopt a resolution to amend the interlocal agreement creating the Oakway Mutual Aid Association and authorize the Mayor and City Council to sign this resolution on behalf of the City. Thank you, Mrs. Marsh. What's the wish of City Council? Is there uh, any motion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Corbett. So I move that the council adopt the uh, recommended resolution which will enter into an intergovernmental agreement uh, creating the Oakway Mutual Aid uh, Association authorized the mayor and the clerk to sign on behalf of the city. Thank you, Mr. Corbett. Uh, is there support? Mr. Mayor. Ms. Grafstein. Support. Thank you, motion was made by uh, Councilmember Corbett, seconded by Councilmember Grafstein, um, to adopt staff's recommendation regarding the amendment of the interlocal agreement with Oakley Mutual Aid Association. I have a question. Can we approve this uh, with four votes? Yes, 
You can, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um, all right, is there any discussion? We have to wait for Councilman Gettings. We could do it with four. We can do it with four. All right. Um, but yeah, thank you, good point. Any other discussion? All right, let's vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. And if you could just mark, um, Mr. Gettings was absent for the vote. Mm -hmm. The motion carries, 4-0. Uh, the next report is listed as item D2. It's from the finance director. It's a resolution establishing and authorized signatories for MERS. Mrs. Marsh. With the appointment of the new finance director, Linda, Linda Kunath, we've been updating all the city's authorized signers. MERS of Michigan requires that the city council approve a formal resolution in order to make this change. Therefore, staff and I recommend that city council adopt a resolution authorizing the personnel holding the positions of finance director, treasurer, city manager, and human resources assistants as authorized signers for MERS of Michigan. Thank you. Uh, what's the wish of city council? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Soltis. I'd like to make a motion that uh, we approve the resolution establishing authorized signatures for the MERS. Very good, thank you. Is there support? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. Support. Thank you, sir. A motion was made by Councilman Soltis, seconded by Councilman Corbett. To authorize the resolution um, regarding the uh, authorized signatories for MERS in Michigan. Is there discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Motion carries. The next report is item D3. It's from the DPS director. It's regarding the Natural Resources Recreation Grant uh, for Edison Park. Mrs. Marsh. Identified in the city's recreation master plan is the need to replace the play skate and add soft fall servicing to Edison Park. In addition to this need, City Council and the City's Capital Improvement Plan have identified the Edison Park Playscape replacement as a priority. The fiscal year 2019 budget currently includes $50,000 in funding to support this project to be used in conjunction with state grant funds. This project would qualify for the Michigan Department of Natural Resources Recreation Passport Grant Program. The City is applying for $87,000 in funding as part of our grant ap application. In terms of the timeline, the grant application deadline is April the 1st, and if approved, funding will not be available until the spring of 2020 as part of this process. The year-end carry-forward of the budgeted $50,000 will also be needed. Staff and I recommend that Council approve the supporting resolution in order to apply for the funds through the MDNR grant process. Thank you, Mrs. Marsh. What's the wish of City Council? Mr. Mayor. Ms. Grafstein. Um, I would like City Council to support the, uh, the recreation passport grant application for Edison Park through, Madison, or through Michigan Department of Natural Resources. Thank you. Is there support? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Gettings? Support. Thank you. A motion was made by Councilor Grafstein, seconded by Councilman Gettings, to support the uh, application for the MDNR recreation passport grant program. Is there discussion? Let's vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. The motion carries. The next uh, item is uh, report D4. It's from the police chief. It's a resolution for participation with the Oakland County Sheriff's uh, SWAT team agreement. Uh, Mrs. Marsh. The Southeast Oakland County SWAT team was disbanded in 2018 due to several participating agencies lacking the ability to dedicate personnel that's required. We now have the opportunity to join with the Oakland County Sheriff's Department SWAT team, allowing the essential services provided by SWAT to Madison Heights. In order to join with Oakland County, the city is required to approve the proposed interlocal agreement with the Oakland County by resolution. Staff and I request that City Council approve the interlocal agreement by resolution and authorize the City Manager to sign this agreement on behalf of the City of Madison Heights. The City Attorney's Office has reviewed this agreement and concurs with staff in support of the resolution and the interlocal agreement. Thank you, Mrs. Marsh. What's the wish of City Council? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Soltis. Uh, I will happily like to um make a motion that we pass the resolution for the participation in Oakland County Sheriff's Office SWAT team and agreement. And authorize the manager to sign? And, yes. 
Thank you for stating the motion. Is there support? Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett? Support. Thank you. Motion was made by Councilmember Soltis, seconded by Councilmember Corbett to approve the interlocal agreement um, by resolution uh, by joining the Oakland County Sheriff's SWAT team and authorize the manager to sign on behalf of the city. Is there a discussion? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. May I ask the chief questions on, about this? Put you on the spot, chief? Of course you may. Welcome, Chief Haynes. Thank you, Ron. So I, I think this is a great idea. Uh, I think it's well overdue. Um, and so can you tell me a little bit about the ones, the SWAT members that were on the prior team, are they gonna be on this new one or are you gonna pick new officers? How does that work? Uh, one of the members is going to retain his position. He's going to move into the Oakland County SWAT team. Um, he has sniper training as well as regular SWAT training. Um, the other member decided that he has so many things going on at work that he's going to back away from the SWAT unit. Um, at some point in the future, if we're able to, we'll add another position like we have. Um, but, you know, the one guy will move right into the, he's already kind of moved into the SWAT position with Oakland County. So what does that consist of? How many members of that SWAT team? They have, well, about two platoons. So approximately 13 pl per platoon, I believe, is what they're at. So about 26 members. Um, made up of Oakland County and now all the other agencies in Southeast Oakland County. Thank you. You're welcome. Other discussion? All right, thank you, City Council. Let's vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. The motion carries. The next uh, report is D5. It's from the City Manager. It's regarding the confirmation of the Deputy City Manager. Mrs. Marsh. Since being appointed the city manager, the deputy city manager role has been vacant. This role is not a separate position, but rather an assignment typically given to a department head that will assist in the leadership of the city. In the past, when the city manager was unavailable for various reasons, the deputy would be named acting city manager in their absence by the city manager. According to our city charter, however, the city council should actually be making this appointment to acting city manager for these periods. With today's technology, times when I'm away from the office and unreachable are extremely rare, however instances may occur in the future. To avoid having an agenda item each time I'll be away from the office, I'm recommending City Council confirm my appointment of Police Chief Corey Haynes as the Deputy City Manager Police Chief and appoint him to serve as Acting City Manager in my temporary absence as I assign him as City Manager. This will still reserve City Council's ability to appoint someone in the case of a more long-term or permanent vacancy while allowing the city to operate during routine absences. Thank you, Mrs. Marsh. What's the wish of City Council? Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mr. Corbett? Go ahead, I'll Mr. yield to Mr. Gettings. He doesn't. Go, go right ahead. Get out there. Go You're a city. senior member. <laughs> Translation. <laughs> <All due> respects. <laughs> um, I would move that the Council confirm the uh, manager's nomination or appointment of Corey Haynes as the deputy uh, City Manager. Thank you. Uh, is there support? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Gettings. Support. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. City Attorney. The request is also to appoint um, uh, Chief Haynes as Acting City Manager during any temporary absence of the City Manager as with well. You, with your permission, Mr. Mayor, I'll, uh, Mayor, I'll uh, incorporate that uh, by reference. Of course, the two parts are uh, incorporated. Mr. Gettings, is that yes, your sir, understanding? Yes, sir, I agree. Okay. Uh, I'll restate the motion, which was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilman Gettings, for Council to confirm the City Manager's appointment of Corey Haynes as the Deputy City Manager and Police Chief, and furthermore, to appoint um, Chief Haynes to serve as the Acting City Manager in the temporary absence uh, of the regular city manager. Is there other, is there discussion by council? Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. I'm gonna invite the uh, police chief back to the uh, podium if you could for a second. And just uh, how does this, uh, based on your conversations with Melissa, how does this coordinate with your work at the police department? It would not, for example, interfere in any way with your uh, service over there? No, it will not. We've worked out all the terms of our agreement. Um, and again, I am very um, honored to, to be thought of for this position and to help Melissa and to help the city move forward. Anything else would be just more softballs to lob to you and you've got that. <laughs> so. I'm set, thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you, is there other discussion? All right, let's vote. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. The motion carries. 
We have one more report. It's the item that we added to the agenda earlier tonight. It'll be listed as item D6. What's the wish of council regarding the tentative agreement between the city and the department heads union? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I move that the uh, council approve the tentative agreement uh, which was negotiated between the city and the department heads union. Very good. Uh, is there support? Mr. Mayor. Ms. Grafstein? Support. Thank you. Motion was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilor Grafstein to approve the tentative agreement between the City of Madison Heights and the Madison Heights Department Heads Union. Is there discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion carries. That concludes reports. The next item on the agenda is under E, items for future public hearings. And uh, up for consideration is a tax abatement request from TKL Investments, LLC, to Edward W. Duffy and Company. And that's at the address 3200 Stevenson Highway. Uh, Mrs. Marsh, do you have a report? Yes, a new, bit, a new business, TKL Investments, Edward W. Duffy and Company, is seeking an abatement of new real property taxes at 30200 Stevenson Highway. They are seeking city council's consideration of tax abatement under the provisions of Public Act 198 of 1974 as amended for their new real property. TKL Edward, Edward W. Duffy and Company is a specialized service center of mechanical tubing and pipe. They are proposing to demolish the existing light industrial structure and erect a new 34,500 square foot structure. The total value of this project is estimated to be $4.5 million. The estimated tax savings to the applicant over the 10-year abatement period is estimated to be $466,979 for all taxing jurisdictions, including $189,674 for the city of Madison Heights. That's calculated at 2018 millage rates. The current taxes received for summer and winter tax for the existing building are $37,234. Even with the abatement, taxes are estimated to be $44,635. The applicant has stated that the company has approximately 15 to 20 full-time jobs that will be relocating to Madison Heights. A new industrial development district must be created prior to the consideration of this request. City Council must first conduct a public hearing to consider establishing an industrial development district located at 30200 Stevenson Highway. Should City Council establish this dis district as requested, they then would consider the request for the real property abatement, which also requires a separate public hearing prior to consideration. So tonight, we are asking City Council if they wish to proceed to take two actions. It would be two separate motions. Um, the first one would be to schedule a public hearing on April the 22nd to consider the request to establish the Industrial Development District at 30200 Stevenson Highway. And the second motion or action would be to schedule a public hearing on April 22nd to consider granting the real property tax abatement at 30200 Stevenson Highway. Thank you, Mrs. Marsh. Uh, so there's two items that council could consider. Uh, the first one would be uh, to set the public hearing to establish the industrial development di district. What's the wish of city council on that first item? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I move that the council uh, establish April 22nd as the date for a public hearing to consider a request to consider an, an industrial development district at 30200 Stevenson in Madison Heights. Thank you, sir. Is there support? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Grafstein. Support. Thank you. Motion was made by Council Member Corbett, seconded by Councilor Grafstein to schedule a public hearing for 422-19 to consider the request to establish an industrial development district at 30200 Stevenson. Is there discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. The motion carries. What's the wish of City Council regarding um, this, uh, the second public hearing regarding the tax abatement? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I move that the Council establish April 22nd, 2019 uh, as the date for a public hearing to consider granting real property tax abatement, also at the property at 30200 Stevenson. Very good. Is there support? Mr. Mayor. Ms. Grafstein? Support. 
Thank you, motion was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilor Grafstein to schedule a public hearing for 4-22-19 to consider granting a real property tax abatement at 3200 Stevenson. Is there discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion carries. The next item on the agenda is under F1. It's bid awards and purchases. It's a request from the court administrator uh, regarding the assigned council administrator. Mrs. Marsh, do you have a report? In accordance with the compliance plan approved by city council and the Michigan Indigent Defense Commission, also known as the MIDC, the 43rd District Court issued a request for qualifications for an assigned council administrator to oversee this program and manage the defense council list. Four applications were received in response. After careful review and an interview process, Wilson & Wilson Law Firm was selected. This firm will fulfill the necessary administrative and organizational requirements needed to ensure full, full compliance with the MIDC's mandated standards for $72,800 as approved by the MIDC. Judge Hunt and the court administrator recommend the approval of this proposal with Wilson & Wilson to serve as the assigned council administrators for 12 months commencing on April 1, 2019 and authorize the city manager to sign on behalf of the city upon review and approval of this contract by the city attorney. And um, Eric Wilson and Steve Morton of Wilson & Wilson have been kind enough to sit through the meeting if you have any questions for them. Thank you, Mrs. Marsh. Uh, what's the wish of city council? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move that the council approve the recommendation um, of Wilson and Wilson to serve as the signed council administrator for 12 months beginning on April 1st, 2019. Authorize the city manager to sign on behalf of the city upon the review and the approval of the final contract by the attorney's office, city attorney's office. Thank you, Mr. Corbett. Is there support? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Gettings. Support. Thank you, sir. Motion was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilman Gettings to approve the pr proposal uh, for Wilson and Wilson to serve as the assigned council administrator for 12 months commencing April 1st, 2019, and further to authorize the city manager, manager to sign on behalf of the city upon review and approval of the contract by the city attorney. Is there a discussion on this item? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, with your permission, I'd like to invite Mr. Wilson uh, to the microphone for a moment, just to give you a chance to introduce yourself again. Many of us have had the chance to hear the Wilson brothers uh, speak eloquently in, in various situations, so I thought maybe we'd allow the whole community to enjoy this, uh, uh, this moment and give you a chance to perhaps describe what it is exactly you will be doing at the court for the next year, sir. Thank okay. you, Councilman Corbett. First of all, I want to congratulate the chief. Uh, I've known the chief for 30, 40 years, Chief? Long time. <laughs> Love him. He and I have a mutual friend, acquaintance, not a SWAT team, right? So we know each other. Uh, my name is Eric Wilson. I'm from the law firm of Wilson & Wilson with my brother Dana, my son Patrick. Uh, as you're aware of, and through your uh, city manager, the Michigan Indi Indigent Defense Commission set up a plan for all jurisdictions in the state of Michigan. They allocated a, uh, a grant, roughly I think this year is around $86 million for the state of Michigan. And uh, through your efforts, uh, the city received a grant, I think, of $468,000 and I think a few dollar change. In, there. in that plan is we're required to meet certain requirements throughout the state. All indigent defendants would receive an attorney either at arraignments, at pretrials and sentencings, and um, that's a change. That's a substantial change and uh, we're uh, working with uh, other cities right now doing the same uh, plan as we're doing that, that you've asked us to do. Uh, it's a challenge because you're bringing in um, basically managing attorneys. That's not a fun job sometimes. It can be a little difficult trying to get them all on one speed. I have good help from my st one of the staff members, Steve Martin, who's here with us. Uh, Steve is a retired school teacher from Hazel Park. Hmm. Wrestling coach. Sometimes we have to put him to work in the other hat. <laughs> uh, so it, it is a challenge. We look forward to working with your court. I've known Judge Hunt for a long, pretty long time. So uh, we believe we can uh, help the court comply with it. Uh, there's obviously going to be some issues to help the city in regards to the quarterly report, which we will help the city manager on that. 
And anything we can do on that, we will work together with them. Um, that's really what, what's going on here. And if you have any questions, be glad to answer them. Thank you, Councilor. Any other discussion from Council? I'm duly impressed, so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Before uh, Council votes on, on, the, um, on the motion, I should indicate that um, uh, we've known the, uh, the Wilson Law Firm for many years and um, very familiar with Eric and Dana and Patrick, and we work with them very well at the court. Um, the contract is already under review. There's some minor tweaking to complete, but the contract should be finalized very shortly if council approves the motion. Thank you, Mr. Sherman. Is there other discussion? All right, let's vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. The motion carries. We can skip ahead to minutes. Is there a motion regarding the minutes from March 11? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Make a motion to that we adopt a regular city council meeting, meeting minutes of 311-19 as is. Thank you. Is there support? Mr. Mayor. Ms. Grafstein. Support. Thank you. A motion was made by Councilman Soltis, seconded by Councilor Grafstein to adopt the minutes from March 11th, 2019. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. The motion carries. Next, we can go to um, nominations and appointments to boards and commissions. I'm not prepared to make any. Does council have any? Um, does that include, Your Honor, the uh, consuls? Oh yeah, we could do that too. Let's include that too. Uh, I think one member wanted an appointment, but I'm gonna defer to Ms. Grafstein on that. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Mark Bliss to the alternate council role for the Environmental Committee, Environmental Citizens Committee, what do we call these things? Environmental Citizens Committee. Okay, Councilor Grafstein, you're nominating Mayor Pro Tem Bliss to be the council alternate to the ECC. Is there support for that nomination? Your Honor. Mr. Corbett. Support. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Grafstein nominated Mayor Pro Tem Bliss to fill the council alternate seat on the Environmental Citizens Committee that was supported by Councilman Corbett. Is there discussion on this item? All right, let's vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Um, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Uh, if he's willing to accept, I would uh, appoint, uh, move to nominate uh, Mr. Gettings to the Treasurer and Ordinance Committee. Yes, sir. Um, he's already on that. Oh, he's serving as the council representative. Oh, what? Well, see, that wasn't what was clear to me. Uh, are these having to be reappointed, or is it just the alternates that these have to be filled? These are new, filled? Your Honor. These are the yes. new ones that were created with the changes in the ordinances and the resolutions over the last but couple. But it didn't affect the, the, the council members? No. These are just brand new positions. These are the boards that did not have alternates. Oh, you gave me too much information. That's where yeah. I overloaded that. <laughs> we'll only fill in the blanks. So, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's a good point. Um, so yeah, mo motion will be withdrawn. Uh, any other nominations for council members to fill these other alternate seats? Mr. Mayor. Yes. I would like to uh, nominate David Soltis as the alternate for Crime Commission Council Representative. To which one? Crime, Crime Commission. Crime Commission alternate. Is there support? No support, sir. Okay, motion was made by Councilor Grafstein, seconded by Councilman Corbett to nominate Councilman Soltis to fill the alternate seat on the Crime Commission. Is there any discussion? All right, let's vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Motion carries. Other nominations? If uh, somebody would nominate, I would be interested in serving on the Historic Committee alternate spot. Mr. Mayor. Yes, please. I would like to nominate Robert Corbett as the council alternate rep for the historical committee. 
I'm so surprised. Thank you. <laughs> so historical Commission. Yes. Thank you. Is there support? Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Mr. Gettings. Support. Thank you. Motion was made by Councillor Grafstein, seconded by Councilman Gettings to appoint Mr. Corbett to the council alternate seat on the historical commission. Is there a discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. The motion I know carries. what you were thinking, Councilman Soltis. <laughs> I could hear it from here. Does someone want to fill in the charter rev revision committee al alternate seat? Oh. They meet That's a once every other decade. Mr. Mayor, I would move to appoint Ms. Grafstein as the alternate to the Charter uh, Revision Committee. Thank you, Mr. Corbett. Is there support? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Uh, Soltis. I gladly support. Thank you. A motion was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilman Soltis, to uh, appoint Councilor Grafstein to fill the Council alternate seat on the Charter Revision Committee. Is there discussion? All right, let's vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion carries. I think that covers all the council nominations or council seats. Uh, another opportunity if there's council nominations for the uh, citizen boards, citizen seats. All right, I'll be back in a couple weeks. Let's continue on. There's no executive session. So before we adjourn tonight's meeting, I'd invite any closing comments from councils, council members and uh, staff members. Uh, we'll begin with Mr. Corbett. Uh, a couple items this evening. First of all, I want to wish our uh, colleague uh, Marjean uh, 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 a quick recovery. She had a little bit of surgery, I understand, and uh, uh, is, uh, she had, you know, Marjean is a tough one, so I expect to see her back here pretty quick. But the best wishes to you, and I understand that uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Mark, uh, here is uh, not feeling good tonight. I can't imagine, probably something to do with the kids crawling all over him, but I'm sure he'll fill in the details later. But um, get well soon. Um, the, the less uh, happy part of this evening, I, I have to acknowledge the passing of a gentleman by the name of Bill Deo. Uh, Bill is a, uh, he's been away from the city for a few years, but uh, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, if you were active in Madison Heights, you had to know him and his wife, Kathy. They were very active. I, I only uh, know a little bit of his personal resume. He was uh, active, I know, one of the founders of the Rotary Club. Mm. He served many years on the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, Bill, um, Bill is a unique man. We often talk about people who, uh, who have their faith and form their service to the community, but Bill was genuinely one of those people. He was the same person in a formal setting or in an informal setting. Um, and uh, he really was, I think, for many of us, a mentor and, a, um, and an example to follow. Uh, a fair and just man who uh, followed his beliefs and uh, didn't care who was ruffled uh, when he stood up for something he believed in. Uh, Godspeed, my friend. I really don't know any of the, the details. Uh, when I left to come here this evening, I hadn't heard uh, the funeral arrangements, so I don't, I don't know where he's being laid out. Um, so I would just say to check the, uh, check the news. Um, Melissa, may I put you on the spot real quick? A couple weeks ago, I, um, it's already done, so, uh, I had uh, asked about um, a complaint, complaints that I was getting and also was seeing online, newspapers, unsolicited, unrequested newspapers piling up on people's front lawns. Um, and I know you guys had reached out, you and possibly the chief, but where are we at on that? Can you give a quick update to... Uh, yeah, we both have been reaching out. Mary Daly, actually, from my office, and the police chief as well, several times. And the last time that Mary Daly reached out to them, they told her that they would need each address. So she had told them that was impossible. It was everyone in the city. So we're working on putting together a letter more formal to send to them. Uh, for, for the sake of um, the folks who may not be familiar with it, um, well, it's the Royal Oak Daily Tribune has an advertising supplement that goes out, I'm gonna say on Wednesdays, but I'm not, not positive what day it is. 
but they literally just go up the street and deliver to every door, whether you're a subscriber or not. The problem, of course, is, well, there are a number of problems, um, but if you're, uh, especially during the winter, uh, in fact, a client of mine over on Vinoy had a rude surprise when the snow melted and he found that there were like six or seven of these uh, uh, packaged uh, papers sitting on his lawn that, that were revealed when the snow melted. Um, to me, it's not really any different. If uh, uh, Bob and I go down the street and just start throwing paper over the place, we're gonna get a ticket for littering. I'm not sure what makes it different here. Uh, throwing uh, larger papers and plastic all about the neighborhood. And it really does, a uh, couple of those streets, Edward and Vinoy, you turned down when the snow melted a couple weeks ago. Um, it really was, um, uh, it really was a mess. So anything that the city can do uh, to follow up on that would be appreciated. I That's all I have this evening, Mr. Mayor. I Thank should you. have added, we're also encouraging residents to call as well. So yeah. not just call the city if they would also call the newspaper and leave their address. That seems to help as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corbett. Uh, Mr. Gettings. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Joe, if I could put you on the spot for a second. I don't know the date for the city run that's coming up. And can people still sign up? April 13th. 13th. April 13th, 13th for the city's 5K. Great. And what's the cost, Joe? $20. $20. Just thought it, if anybody wants to still run in the, the city run that's coming up, there's your info. I uh, appreciate it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, City Attorney, Mr. Sherman. A uh, couple quick things, Mr. Mayor. First of all, uh, very saddened to hear the news of the passing of Bill Dale. He was really a nice man I've known for many years. So my deepest sympathies to Kathy and the entire Dale family. Also, um, get well wishes to both Councilwoman Scott and to Mayor Pro Tem Bliss. And the city's uh, fun run on April 13th um, is at Suarez Park. What is the time, Joe, did you say? 8 a.m. 8 a.m. start. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. City Manager, Mrs. Marsh. So recently the city started a new Notify Me program on our website. So in addition to the Nixle alerts, which you can go, which are geared more towards emergencies and snow emergencies, this program is geared more towards any department in the city. So you can go out and check if you want finance alerts or active adult center alerts or police department alerts, and the department head's able to send you a text message. So I would encourage people to sign up for that if they're interested. They can pick which ones they want to get and which ones they don't. Um, also, yard waste collection begins this week. And I would like to wish Marjean and Mark get well wishes. And also Ricky Busler. I understand most people in the community know him, and he had an accident with a van earlier today. So I, I hope he's doing well as also. Thank you. Uh, City Clerk, Ms. Prince? <laughs> Nothing this evening, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Grafstein? I want to remind everyone that um, this Thursday at Fire Station 1, which is the fire station right up here, the Crime Commission is putting on um, some information that uh, Eliza Lee spoke about. It's the child abuse prevention. It's going to be from 6 to 8, so if you can make it, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Soltis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, real quick, I want to, while we have both our chiefs from uh, police and fire, I want to um, Mention it that uh, I think due to an outstanding job, we are all proud of you. Um, our, I think our city is the safest in terms of um, crime, and I think our city is the safest uh, in terms of um, response for EMS and fire. Uh, you do an outstanding job, so I appreciate it. We all appreciate everything you do, uh, and congratulations, uh, Chief, for your deputy city manager position. Um, second. <coughs> Great minds must think alike. Because I was thinking uh, to myself, because uh, you know I had kids that were younger, and um, we always tried to find things to do uh, on Saturday or Sunday. And so I was talking to Melissa, the city manager, about um, having some type of play day at the library for kids, uh, not older ones, but kind of younger ones. So there is going to be something happening in May. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and it will be on a Saturday at the library in the, what room is it? The Brick and, Brick and Ridge Brick room. Yeah, that room. Um, so um, come out and check it out. I think it'll be a good time. Um, third, 
Um, I finally got all the data for the CPS, Child Protective Services, uh, from the state of Michigan. It took a while, it took six weeks, pretty much, uh, but I did receive it. And so I've been disseminating it and I, um, taking a look at it. And I wanted to see if I could make a motion that um, I could present that data next council session um, as a PowerPoint presentation. So I would need a second motion. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd be happy to endorse that motion or second it. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Soltis, could you restate the motion, please? Uh, I make a motion that we um, adopt, or excuse me, put on the agenda for next council session, um, Madison Heights CPS data report, a PowerPoint presentation. Madison Heights what? I'm sorry. Madison Heights uh, Children Protective Services data report. Oh, okay. And that was seconded by Mr. Corbett? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so the motion is to add to um, an upcoming agenda for city council, a data report um, from CPS. Is that clear enough? Okay, yep. is there any discussion on the item? All right, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Soltis. And lastly, April 25th, uh, as was mentioned earlier, in Lansing, uh, they're having a um, childhood, child prevention rally, if you will. Um, I'm hoping to get up there, my first time there. I think it's a great time. It's a, it's a pinwheel um, presentation and, and, and um, there's uh, guest speakers. So I think it's worthwhile to uh, support that. Thank you, that's all. Uh, yeah, thank you everyone. Um, yeah, please, please support the Madison Heights Crime Commission by attending their uh, forum that addresses child abuse. Uh, the program's from six to eight. However, the doors do open at 5.30. Um, and you know, to our council members, Mark and Marjean, please uh, get well soon. And I wanted to uh, give a special thank you to the city manager and the chief of police, Corey Haynes, um, for answering the call of support from the mosque that's located in Madison Heights. After the tragic shooting in Christchurch, New Zealand, um, that Friday, uh, the members of the mosque in our city, the American Islamic Community Center, were just terrified to even go in and pray. Um, and our police chief agreed to uh, just, you know, be the ever vigilant, watchful eye to protect that community, our community. And the city manager and I joined them uh, before their prayer so we could meet some of the leaders. And uh, it, I think that was just such a special gesture from our government and from our law enforcement just to show that um, these important members of our community are loved and cherished and that they should, not, they should never fear to assemble or pray in the city of Madison Heights. So personal and professional thank you to you, Corey and Melissa. Um, I don't believe there's any other business before city council. Uh, so that means the meeting is adjourned. Good evening.